Hello and welcome to this fucking spy-tastic edition of Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing the DVD of Gotcha, starring Anthony Edwards and Linda Fiorentino. Gotcha is a fucking great movie of my youth. I fucking love it so much. Came out in 1985. Basically the story is Anthony Edwards, and hey man, don't roll your eyes. I know Anthony Edwards fucking when he got older, he played a bunch of nerd roles on ER and shit, but hey man. There was a time when Anthony Edwards was cool, man. There's a reason why they put him in fucking Top Gun and shit. He was a bad motherfucker when he was young. He plays a college kid at some Southern California fucking... I, I can't remember if they fucking actually show which one. I want to say it's UCLA, but it, it might have been like a fake college or something. Anyway, long story short, he likes to play this game. It's like a campus-wide game. People sign up. It's called Gotcha. They run around and basically like... Basically, it's like human fucking honey. The way it works is somebody will get a car with your name on it, they gotta find you, and they gotta shoot you with a paintball gun. So the opening montage of the movie is fucking badass. It's like some James Bond shit, but with paintball guns. He's running through the campus. He's popping out of garbage cans. He's shooting these motherfuckers. But the funny thing is, is they know they're in the game, but nobody tries to get run away. Or, like, everybody just walking along like, and then fucking get shot. You would think if they were playing that game, like, you fuckers would be more aware, but I guess not. The real story picks up. He's trying, you know, he's playing this paintball game. He wants to get laid. There's all these hot girls on his college campus, but he can't do it because they all know he's the asshole who runs around shooting the paintball guns off in the middle of class and shit. Spring break rolls around. Him and his roommate played by Nick Corey. Fucking <laughs> Nick Corey, man, just sidebar real quick. Nick Corey, he was a real good fucking actor, man. He was uh, in Nightmare on Elm Street and shit. Basically, this, the, the true story of it was he was a Hispanic guy, whatever. You could look at the guy and tell. He's a Latino. But anyway, because there was like, I guess racist bullshit still in the 1980s, he, he, his manager made him change his name to Nick Corey and try to pretend like he was Italian. Okay, so what does that have to do with this movie? Okay, so you got, his real name is, uh, I want to say it's Jesus Garcia. Anyway, you got Jesus Garcia pretending to be Nick Corey. He gets cast in this movie. And he plays a fucking Hispanic guy in the movie. But, like, what's crazy is he had to pretend to, he was a Hispanic guy who had to pretend to be an Italian guy so he could get a role playing a Hispanic guy. <laughs> Fuck it. I'll tell you what, Hollywood is fucking weird sometimes. Him and Anthony Edwards, they go on spring break, but they don't go to Florida to look at titties and shit. They go all the way to Paris, France. They're going to do, like, a whole Euro trip thing, like, fucking Chevy Chase, fucking European vacation style. They get there, Nick Cord, he's running around, he's because he plays like the stud character, he's just fucking banging everything that moves. Anthony Edwards, he's a nerd, he's sightseeing, he's trying to get pussy, but he can't. So anyway, he runs into fucking Linda Fiorentino playing Sasha Banachek, some fucking Czechoslovakian, whatever. And he goes up, he tries to be smooth, tries to lie to her, she sees through his bullshit. She got like a real Boris and Natasha fucking generic Eastern European accent. So he tries to get in her panties, being all cool, that doesn't work. She tells him, hey man, I like virgins, I like to fuck virgins. And he's like, well, I'm a virgin, fuck me. So anyway, they fuck. And another side, Linda Fiorentino, I don't, know, I don't know what was up back in the day, but Linda Fiorentino, she always played a fucking femme fatale, sexy sex symbol. Every, every movie fucking, she walks in the room, guys pull her dicks out, start jerking off. Everybody wants to fuck Linda Fiorentino in the 80s or 90s movie. And like, but the thing is, when you see her, I mean, don't get me wrong, she, she's a good actress. She's actually got a real pretty face, but Linda Fiorentino just like a skinny woman, man. She got like, I'm sorry, but flat chest, her ass completely flat. I mean, and especially this movie, man. She got some real short fucking, looks like a boy's hair, because she looks like a 12-year-old boy in this movie. And all she does is just chain smoke, and like, they just play her off like she's so fucking hot. And whatever, man, but I, I don't know. I mean, she was a good actress. She deserved to have the career she had, but I don't know why, but... You know, wanted to take her and make her this fucking sex symbol, whatever. But anyway, I guess this is what you got to deal with. <laughs> but I guess in the 80s, everybody was like, love skinny girls that look like boys or something. Anthony Edwards, he gets pussy whipped, of course. And then fucking Leonard Fiorentino says, hey, I got to do some business uh, over in West Berlin. You know, Anthony Edwards originally was going to go to Spain with his buddy, Nick Corey. But, you know, whatever, he wants this pussy so bad. So he follows her to West Berlin to get to West Berlin. He's a little like, man, I don't really want to go to West Berlin, whatever. These were the days when there was West Berlin, East Berlin. East Berlin was by far the worst, but West Berlin, it, it was still close. You didn't want to be fucked around there. So he gets there, he's a little nervous, whatever. You know, she, she fucks him a few more times. They're in a hotel fucking whatever. And that's another thing, man. This movie fucking PG-13. I rag PG-13 movies now because they're so fucking pussy, but man... PG-13 movies back in the day were badass. People could fuck, fucking smoke cigarettes, drink, get fucked up, whatever. They would kill people, whatever they want to do. Now PG-13 is like, 
watch an episode of fucking Law and Order at 9 o'clock p.m. on network TV. He, she tells him, I gotta go to East Berlin and drop all this package. I'm a courier. And he's like, what? She's like, yeah. So she goes there and he's like, are you a spy? And she's like, no. Nah. She laughs and then she throws more pussy on him so he forgets about it, of course. Long story short, they go to East Berlin. She gets a package. Shit gets fucked. She, she slips a little package into like his backpack. Next thing you know, she has to take off and run. Bunch of motherfuckers, I don't know if they're Russian or what, a bunch of Eastern European motherfuckers running out and shooting them. And the Edwards, 18 year old kids in the middle of Eastern Europe, man, he doesn't know what the fuck to do. Fuckers are running after him. Fuckers are chasing him. And like, it ain't a spoiler because they show it in every fucking trailer, but there's like a badass action scene where he has to jump off a bridge and shit. So I mean, he just barely escapes. He barely gets out of the whatever. He barely gets out of the DDR if they want to strip search and look up his asshole and all this shit. He fucking sneaks out. He gets back. He fucking flies home and shit. He gets back to fucking Southern California. And he's like, ooh, man, that shit was over. Starts going through his backpack, finds a roll of film. Oh shit, I had the thing that all the spies was fucking after me for in Europe and shit. So next thing you know, all these motherfuckers are running around. Tries to go to the CIA and all this shit. They're like, oh fuck you kid, we don't care. And then when they realize the shit's legit, you know, they try to help him. But then he can't trust them because they're shady too. So he has to play everything down the middle. Fucking Nick Corey gets all his fucking boys from the barrio to be his backup. Fucking, because that's the thing, he's just like a scared kid in Eastern Europe, but now these motherfuckers are on his turf. They're in fucking California, and he's gonna fuck them up good. So, even though he actually doesn't kill anybody, he gets back with the paintball shit, he gets some tranquilizer gun shit, and it just turns into like some cool teenager James Bond shit. If they made this movie now, it fucking would start Taylor Lautner and he'd be some fucking fake badass. But that was cool back in the 80s. They would take a movie about a fucking guy who could not get laid, was a virgin. And by the end of the movie, he was fucking like a badass fucking spy type of motherfucker fucking people up. I loved this movie as a kid. Sometimes you watch shit that you loved as a kid and it's not that good. This is not the case. This movie still is really good, really entertaining, great popcorn movie. I'm going to give Gotcha a fucking... A fucking man, I'm going to give it 8.5 out of 10. It's that good. I love it. Picture and sound is just being a DVD from the fucking late 90s or whatever. You know, you think it's not going to be that good. It actually looks pretty good by DVD standards. There's only a few little times you see a little sh crunchy shit on the screen and shit. But most of the time, the colors are real good. There's a lot of green in it, a lot of scenery. It's a nice looking movie, man. The DVD presentation ain't bad. The audio, just some fucking Dolby 2.0 mono. You know, they didn't do a whole remix and shit because this movie was not popular then. It's not going to be popular now or whatever. But it sounds okay. It really wasn't that distracting. So picture and sound by DVD standards, pretty good, man. I'm going to give it 7 out of 10. Extra features, this is the only place where it shits the bed. Extra features, it's just got the theatrical trailer, which is cool to see and everything. But then it's just got some recommendation pull shit. I went to it. It just had literally a picture of the fucking DVD boxes of like some spy movies like Born Identity. Which, hey, that's cool. But, you know, Gotcha is kind of like a cooler, more fun movie than that. You know, I don't really think if you love Gotcha, you're going to love Spy Game and Born Identity. But whatever. Sorry, extra features, 1 out of 10. So that's it for Gotcha, man. Just like a great little thriller from the 80s. A good snapshot of the time. You know, it's like a true eight, mid-80s movie. You see what was going on, the fashions, whatever. The paintball craze is good. Fucking, the name Gotcha, I don't know if it was a direct time in this movie, but later on they made a Gotcha paintball video game for Nintendo Entertainment System. They had a little, they had toy versions of paintball guns. I had a Gotcha one of them. It just had these little paint pellets you shoot buddies with and shit. Hey, it was great, man. 1980s paintballs, fucking foreign pussy. Getting shot at, jumping off fucking bridges and shit. What more could you ask for?